Hello everyone, it's Miss Redmond here and this is your fourth lesson on the sound topic. This one is called How Does the Ear Work? If you haven't got one already, please go and get a pen and a piece of paper so that you can make notes and do any of the tasks that I give you as we go along. You've got your learning journey here at the bottom of the slide, so feel free to pause the video and write down any of those points. So a little recap, how do sounds travel from their source to your ear? Pause the video now and write down your answers and I will tell you in just a moment. So sound waves travel as vibration or they travel as a longitudinal wave through the air generally uh, from the source to get to your ear. So here's a diagram of the ear and if you can, I'd love it if you draw this diagram out and then label it up using these uh, words. If you're not confident about drawing, then just write the letters down and match them up. Uh, give it a go and then I will tell you all the answers. Okay, so <laughs> letter E is the auditory nerve. We'll do all the labels and then I'll talk you through what they what their function is. The eardrum is B, C is the ossicles, the cochlea is D, pinna is A, and the auditory canal is F. Okay, so this is the pinna, it's the outside of your ear, and that's the bit you can see on the outside of your head, and it directs all of the sound waves down to this part, which is your auditory canal, commonly known as your ear hole. Please never stick anything in your ear hole because you can damage all of this stuff inside and you can give yourself an infection. So never do that. Uh, next, so the sound wave travels, the vibration travels down the auditory canal and it causes this part, the eardrum, to vibrate. If you've ever done drumming, particularly with a very large drum, so with a very big skin, if there's a loud noise in that room, you can actually see the skin vibrating. Or maybe somebody in your house slams a door occasionally and it'll make the windows rattle. Same kind of thing, right? The eardrum vibrates when sound waves come down the auditory canal. And the eardrum passes the vibrations onto these things, which are called the ossicles. So they are the smallest bones in your body. In fact, the very smallest one is this one, which is called the stirrup. You don't need to know the names of the individual bones. You need to know that they're called ossicles. And then that links up with the oval window, which is not on this label. That's quite a, that's a detail. Great if you can remember it, fine if you don't. So the oval window, which is part of the cochlea. So the cochlea has these things over here, which are called semicircular canals. They're not involved in hearing, they're actually involved in balance. And they are half filled with liquid, a bit like a spirit level. If you've ever helped somebody in your house to do some DIY, uh, they might have used a spirit level to check that the shelf or whatever is horizontal or vertical. Uh, so they help with balance, not hearing. This part of the cochlea is very, very important in hearing. So the ossicles pass the vibrations onto this part of the ear called the cochlea. It's called that uh, because it looks like a snail. And so that's where this word comes from. So in Spanish, snail is caracol. That sounds a bit like cochlea. Cochlea is the Latin word for snail and Spanish is heavily influenced by Latin. Anyway, the cochlea is full of tiny hairs and those tiny hairs pick up the vibrations and turn those vibrations into an electrical signal which is picked up by the auditory nerve, which is this bit here, letter E. And the auditory nerve takes those signals to the brain and your brain processes that information and tells you that you're hearing a dog barking or a bird singing or your people at home slamming doors or whatever you're hearing. Okay. 
So a bit more detail on the ossicles. Again, you don't need to know the names of these. It's just interesting. So back in the day, people thought that this one looked like a hammer. This one looked like an anvil. And this one looks like a stirrup. And back in the day, these were common things that you might see around and about. So it made logical sense. And this gives you an idea about how tiny those things are. So these are the three ossicles sitting on somebody's finger. They're absolutely tiny, smallest bones in your body. All right, here's a little recap of how the ear works. Please feel free to pause the video now and write down your answers. It would be best if you write the whole sentences so that you've got those notes completed uh, rather than just writing down the words in the correct order, but it's up to you and we'll do the answers on the next slide. Hopefully. Answers. So, the air vibrates to make a sound. The pinna causes the sound to go into the ear. The air makes the eardrum vibrate, which then makes the ossicles vibrate. The vibrations are passed on to the cochlea, which has tiny hairs, the auditory nerve then takes a message to the brain and we hear the sound. All right, so the decibel scale. This it scale is used to measure the loudness of a sound. Um, and it's an unusual scale because it's what we call a logarithmic scale. You don't need to, no, bleh, <laughs> you don't need to know that word. It's just for interest. Um, and if you're really keen on maths, because logarithmic scales are actually A level standard in maths. So the important thing about this though, is that an increase in 10 decibels is actually an increase 10 times. So it's not adding 10, it's timesing by 10. So for example, if we pick out two, uh, items on there. A motorcycle is 10 times louder than a lawnmower. So a lawnmower is 90 decibels and a motorcycle is 100 decibels. That means that a motorcycle is 10 times louder than a lawnmower because uh, 100 decibels is 10 more than 90 decibels. Oh, here's some more detail on the cochlea. So this is actually a slice through somebody's cochlea and you can sort of see, um, we can see structures inside there, but the important thing about this diagram is the distance from the opening of the cochlea and the frequency. So we've got eight, 8,000 hertz up at this side, um, at near the entrance, and then at 10 millimeters, it's gone down to 4,000 hertz, and then 2,000 hertz, and 1,000 hertz. So the frequency is decreasing as we get into the center of the cochlea. So um, this relates to the audible range that we mentioned in the previous lesson, because I mentioned that as you get older, your hearing gets worse, it deteriorates. And actually, the older you get, the more difficult it is for you to hear high frequency sounds or high pitch sounds. And the reason for that is the part of the cochlea that detects those sounds is near the entrance. So this part of the cochlea is constantly getting bombarded with uh, high fr with sound and these hairs here are detecting the high frequency sound so these are the ones that lose the ability to detect the sound first so somebody my age is unable to hear very high pitched sounds that you guys might still be able to hear all right and here's a bit more detail. So this is a micrograph, a very fancy one. So this is a picture taken down a microscope and you can see what the hairs look like inside the cochlea. 
So these hairs inside the cochlea detect sound and turn it into an electrical signal and they can be damaged by very loud sounds or by lots of exposure to loud sounds. So sometimes you might hear a sound that is so loud that it's physically painful and that can be physically damaging your ears. And the other way that you can damage your hearing is if you listen to quite loud sounds a lot. So if you listen to your earphones and they're on too loud, you're actually damaging your hearing. I think a good rule of thumb is if you can hear the music clearly when your earphones aren't in, they're too loud. OK, please take care of your hearing. Um, it's important. OK. I've just given you the answers to, well, I've given you the answer to this, how can sound damage your hearing? So how can you avoid damaging your hearing? I've sort of given you the answer, one answer to that, but I'm sure you can think of other ways that you can avoid damaging your hearing. So write down your answers, and if you want to check them, send them to your teacher. And here's your summary. We've got two part summary again, because we've got lots of keywords in this lesson. So this summary is for the parts of the ear. The ear detects sound. The pinna is the outer part of the ear. Auditory canal is the tube which leads from the pinna to the eardrum. The eardrum is the membrane at the end of the auditory canal which vibrates when sound waves hit it. Ossicles are the bones which carry sound vibrations from the eardrum to the cochlea. The oval window is part of the cochlea, which is a it's a thin membrane which vibrates due to the vibrations of the ossicles. The cochlea is the snail shaped structure which contains tiny hairs that detect sound vibrations, turning them into electrical signals. The auditory nerve carries electrical signals from the ears to the brain. The outer ear consists of the pinna, the auditory canal and the eardrum. So although the eardrum is quite far inside your head, it's actually part of the outer ear. The middle ear is the ossicles and the inner ear is the cochlea and the semicircular canals, which, as we mentioned, are involved in balance. So feel free to pause the video and write those down. And here is your second summary slide. To amplify something is to make a sound louder. An amplifier is a structure or a device which makes the sound louder. Decibels is a unit of loudness or intensity of sound you might also hear it referred to as. And the symbol is DB, lowercase d, uh, uppercase b. A 10 decibel increase is an increase of 10 times because of the logarithmic scale, as we mentioned, and a diaphragm is a flexible plate, and that's used in microphones and speakers. Thank you so much for listening, and I will speak to you next time.